I'm 21, so kind of, I'm coming less from the perspective, kind of like the parent, more from like, hey, I was here a few years ago, and just like, here kind of, a lot of this stuff like I relate to, because a lot of the stuff like, that I'll be kind of saying, it's like, oh man, this is a great recommendation, it's because my parents did it, or like, I read it, and I was just like, wow, I wish my parents did that for me. And so, kind of, just a different perspective, I guess. I guess that's why kind of I was picked for this one, is because I was kind of the youngest one. And so, yeah, like I, I have my bachelor's in biblical studies. <coughs> yeah, so like I said, I'm 21. And yeah, and so kind of we'll be talking about kind of grade 10, 11, and 12. And kind of, it's kind of interesting how different each of those grades are, considering that like they're within three years. Like if you kind of look back at the last three years of your life, it's like, oh, it's kind of nothing major has changed in your life. But for like high school students, there's so much change. Like just going get first like your first year of high school, kind of trying to figure out who you are, and then you got your second year of high school where you're like you think you have it all together and you're trying to get more freedom. And the grade twelve where you kind of understand it's like, hey, I don't want to actually leave this place, or kind of like there's way too much change happening way too fast. And so, each of these sections is so different, but like in terms of aspects of faith and stuff, they they overlap so much, like how much you can do as leaders or as parents, and how how important it is, because like I look at look at my life and like, look where I ended up. It's just like, it was, my parents had such a huge influence. And I didn't really attend youth group too much growing up, so I never had like a small group leader. But I was really kind of, the youth pastor kind of, almost like took me under his wing, even though I didn't come to youth group, he like took me out for lunch and stuff. And he's very much like a mentor for me in grade 12. And so through him is kind of too, kind of how I saw how he built into me faith-wise, and how he just connected to me in a lot of ways. And so just like how important that is to just have that connection with kids. And so the grade 12, kind of what they call as a phase, is like the why not phase. It's like you're away from middle school now, you're kind of, you're starting to discover what like freedom is. Some students in grade 10 will be getting their driver's license and stuff like that. And so you, they're kind of experiencing this like, oh, I want this freedom, but they have no real way to obtain it. And they kind of, kind of it's like a new to them. And so, I don't know. And it's kind of creates this tension between you and like as a parent or as a leader because they're trying to get this freedom and you don't really know how to respond with that either and so most of the grade 10 year you'll be struggling with this or it's just like you both don't know how this is going to work they're kind of trying to push you're trying to see how much freedom to actually give them and sometimes it's too much sometimes it's too little and so yeah it's like it's just kind of weird tension I kind of remember when I was in grade 10 kind of having this where it's just like I grew up with two, my parents were both grew up in Russia. And so kind of super strict, very kind of like conservative in their views and kind of like wanted me to kind of do exactly as they wanted to. And I kind of remember just like rebelling in little ways just because I could and just to kind of like get that little bit of freedom for my own. And so, yeah, it's kind of a, it's an interesting phase for them because it's also a phase where they start to make things their own, where they kind of, they start to separate from parents or from other people in their life and to kind of try to form thoughts on their own. And that's mostly, a lot of it's to do because they're physically changing a lot as well. Like you look at their, their sleep, sleep cycle changes quite a bit because they start needing a lot, uh, it's a different sleep cycle. Like they, there's research done where people in that age group between like grade 10 to 12, their bodies will want to go to sleep later. So they're more functional at night and therefore they want to sleep later in the day. And so a lot of schools, I know some schools in America have, have switched their schedules that they start school at 11 and they finish at 6 because that's kind of where teens become more functional. So it's kind of like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's okay if your kid kind of sleeps in on the weekends because that's kind of what their body naturally wants. Uh, and this is also an age where they respond a lot, very well to praise. And this is kind of like an area where you want to be more kind of critical of them because they're kind of trying out new things and most likely they'll be failing because like they don't know what freedom is, they don't know how to experience that themselves. And so this is like, natural instinct is to criticize this, but they tend to respond better with praise. It's kind of a, uh, yeah. And so, it's important, like, parents, you'll see that uh, your, your, 
Well, the great tens will tend to draw away from you and more closer to their leaders within like youth or within school. And that's mostly because they're trying to kind of get more of that freedom where you've been kind of their main leader at that point. And so they're like, oh, I need something. Like I want something of my own, something of my own. And so they tend to draw more towards their leaders. And so kind of you'll have to kind of anticipate that, whether it's like it's not something you've done. It's kind of like them trying to get more of that freedom. And to leaders too, it's like you have to work with parents on that. Whereas it's like sometimes kids will pull so far away from their parents where it's just like the leader basically becomes their parent. And so there's kind of danger in that where you kind of have to sometimes bring them back to their parents. Like, hey, your parents aren't like the bad guys in your life. Because oftentimes that could happen if a parent is too overbearing and too controlling. But it's also kind of, it's a balance. And kind of, I think that's what our lives are about, is just ba finding balances in different things. And so, yeah, and with this kind of, as they t kind of try to separate, you'll find them um, challenging you in areas because they're kind of starting to think for themselves. And so they'll kind of, they'll start to question everything. And so kind of important thing to remember is that they're kind of, they're not, they're not challenging you kind of for like who you are, or kind of your values, but more like, why do we do this? And kind of they're actually looking for more than just like, just because. Because this, this, these three years, it's called, uh, they call it, they think like philosophers almost, where they kind of, they want, they call it the philosophy stage because they want to be part of the process and not just like, uh, like uh, just, uh, just there for the ride. They want to be kind of involved. That's why they kind of, this, this is why this is what kind of come up where it's just like, well, why not? Like, why do we do this? Why this? Why this? It's because they kind of, they're trying to involve themselves more as they kind of mature. And so, but the, yeah, and so it's kind of like a, it's not a bad thing if they start asking a lot of questions where it kind of seems like they're challenging you. And so, but you, they still need boundaries, but it has to be kind of boundaries that make sense in their perspective. And so a lot of, a lot of this stuff you'll kind of have to either kind of like debate with them or kind of explain things a lot more to them versus when they were kids, where it's just like, oh, it just goes because it is. They kind of need reason and explanation for that. And kind of four grade, four grade tens, like a lot, of, a lot of these ideas will kind of overlap sometimes, but your main idea is, is to just mobilize their potential because kind of as they're kind of starting to kind of bloom and become their own, it's kind of your, you don't want to push them, but you kind of want to guide them into who they're becoming. Yeah, and so in terms of faith-wise, kind of one of the major goals you'll find in this year is to kind of just fuel their passions because at this stage they're kind of, they're making faith their own if they haven't already. And this is one of the most important stages I find because I found myself, it, was, it kind of happened a few years, like these, these stages also kind of bounce back and forth. You can, can be kind of pushed to more grade 11 or back a few years as well. Kind of, they're not really set in stone. But for me personally, this happened kind of in grade eight where I made my faith my own and it was just like, I understood that like, hey, I don't go to church simply because my parents do or it's simply because it's like, this is kind of like family tradition or whatever, but like, hey, this is why we go to, to church. And even though I'm kind of like, youth group can teach you all that, where it's just like, this is why you go to church. It's kind of, there's no kind of connection between what Christianity looks like in church and what it looks like in your life. And so it is an important kind of stage where they'll be watching you and like leaders and parents too, where they're like, okay, what, is, what does faith look like lived out? And so, yeah, they kind of, they need you in that to kind of guide them and help them kind of discover their own personal mission. And so kind of like, yeah, that kind of builds on the question, like the last, why should I believe? And so you have to kind of stay engaged in their personal faith journey by kind of, by having conversations at home. Like I remember, I distinctly remember this shift that my father kind of did. He worked a lot. He worked like 16 hour days, some days. And like all I saw him was in the morning and sometimes at night. And he made it a specific point to get home at dinner time every day, have dinner together. And then before we went, we always prayed together and had devos. And I remember that kind of growing up 
even like as I got into grade 10, 11, 12, we still did that as a family. And it was just like, I kind of, I look back into that and it's just like, that's what kind of showed me priorities for my dad. Because he took his time, took whatever money he could have been making or whatever, and he kind of came home and was just like, no, no, devos are important. Like, no matter what, we pray together, we did devos. Like, even if people were tired, we'd do them earlier. And it's kind of just like, it's one of those things where kind of just having those conversations where we would just, it wasn't all like, oh, we just gather together, pray, read our Bibles, that's it. We kind of, we kind of came together, we talked about things. My dad kind of brought up issues sometimes or kind of challenged us in our faith. And I just remember that. And it's just like, that's really built into me faith-wise and kind of showed me where his heart is at as well and kind of led me to pursue that too because as leaders and as parents, you guys serve as like these huge examples as much as your kid might be rebelling at the time, they're still watching you and they're still learning from you. And so, and another thing I found is make church a priority. I think it's, it's such an important thing because I've seen it, I've seen it happen within our own family where one of my cousins, uh, my aunt and uncle were like, yeah, you don't need to go to church. And he fell away from the faith. And it was just kind of, it's kind of hard to see because like for him it was just like, oh, it's, you're looking for that freedom. This is your kind of ch your choice now. You can, don't have to go. And for him it was like, ah, oh, church, church is boring, because he hadn't hit that point where he was just like, this is what faith is. And so he kind of just left it, and he kind of got got into the party scene. And like throughout throughout high school, it was rough. It's kind of hard to see kind of your family go through that. And uh, yeah, it's kind of it's one of those things where it's like church is an, a very important thing. And I think my, my parents did a good job of that. We're kind of, even from a young age, we were kind of, it wasn't just like show up to church. You kind of go off with your own kind of kids, kids group and then we're kind of gone. It was like we showed up, we went to the main service together and then we kind of did our things. And so, yeah. They kind of want you to connect on a personal level. They want to see your faith and kind of they want they want to talk about their stuff too. Because like as they discover it and as they kind of make it their own, some like cool question to ask them is like, what has God been teaching you? And in the same way you can be like, yo, this is what God has been teaching me, without the yo maybe. <laughs> and it is okay at this stage to say like, or at any stage to say, I don't know. Like if a question comes up and it's like, I don't know. But at that point it kind of, it applies to all the stages where it's like, if you don't know, kind of find out. Show them, show your kids that, or, that it is a priority for you to kind of find those answers and for you to grow yourself. And then, yeah, for you, for you too, it's important to be connected to a faith community. If you're coming to church, to be in a small group and to kind of be growing yourselves because it might not be like a visible to you thing, but to your kids who have been watching you since they were babies and you kind of are the the greatest influence on their lives is kind of very obvious to them. Yeah, so then grade 11. So grade 11 tends to be incredibly busy for them because, yeah, they tend to take a lot on a lot of classes, extracurricular activities, and it's kind of just like that point where they're not worrying about the future most of the time. A lot of them aren't, where it's just like, you kind of just live semester to semester. And it's kind of, it's a, they call it just trust me phase, where they'll kind of be going out, doing things themselves, and they kind of just want you to trust them. And so they're becoming more, they're becoming more adult-like, but not necessarily adults. And they're at that point where they kind of, they want to be out and exploring the world Kind of, they want to kind of find those new freedoms that they have. And so, yeah. At this point, kind of uh, physical changes haven't, aren't as significant because most girls will have reached maturity by then. And then kind of guys are still kind of growing a bit, but kind of, kind of reaching that kind of peak. And so socially, 11th graders tend to be uh, more self-focused, busy, and unavailable. So as kind of parents and leaders, you kind of have to like schedule time with them because kind of 
they're kind of they're always they're always doing something, and even kind of when they're not doing something for them, it's kind of like a restful time. It's like oh, I need to kind of I don't know scroll through Facebook for an hour to kind of like kind of my own time, <coughs> and so you have to kind of make it a priority. Show them that you are important enough where it's like hey, why don't we kind of hang out at this time and kind of make it more a very kind of like hey, I know you kind of you're busy, I'm busy, but like let's just do life together. And so, like I said, they kind of they struggle with uh, long-term thinking. And so, you guys can come alongside them and kind of help them kind of what, what planning, what scheduling looks like. Because at this point, they've kind of been given a lot of options. And it's like, oh, hey, you can do this, this, and this. And they go like, yes. And they kind of start doing everything. But like, their minds haven't developed enough where they're kind of able to kind of think that long-term, where it's just like, oh, what's going to happen to me in two months when everything kind of starts, exams hit, and I'm doing this, this, and this. And so it can be quite a stressful time for them. And so it's like you can kind of come alongside them and guide them through this. Or if you yourself aren't good at that, you can kind of guide them towards someone else. And so grade 11s will tend to surprise you quite a bit because like in grade 10, they're kind of they're fighting these freedoms and kind of wanting to pull away. And so in grade 11, they kind of they pull away and they start to develop in their own way or kind of they, they tend to just accomplish things. Like they'll fill the calendar and you'll be like, oh, there's no way they can do that. And then they go out and they do it. And an important thing to find in this stage is that when they do kind of impress you or they kind of like, they do something cool, is to encourage them. Because a push in the right direction tends to be kind of all you need sometimes. Like I remember in my, my grade 12 year, uh, my, I went on a missions experience with my youth pastor to Mexico and like he just put me in kind of like this position of leadership where I was kind of teaching some youth something from the Bible and I think afterwards he come, came up to me he's like wow like you're you're that was great like you're good at teaching and like that has stuck in my mind through Bible college and everything I was going through it and I was just like dang that like one encouragement was just like you're good at teaching I was just like am I really good at teaching and it's like I couldn't get it out of my mind because it's just like he was such a prominent figure in my life, and he said it in such a way where I was just like, man, maybe I am. And that's kind of, it led me here, basically, where it was just like, I kind of kept going through it. And it was just like, that kind of encouragement kind of pushes, pushes them towards what they're good at. Because oftentimes, they're doing so much, they can't really, and they don't have that kind of like self-focus self sometimes to kind of be able to like, oh, this is what I'm actually good at. And they kind of need someone to come alongside them and help them in that direction. And so, so yeah, with this, with this age as well, it's like you're mobilizing potential. Like they're still growing, they're still kind of taking on a lot, but kind of as, as they kind of go through high school, kind of your, your time periods kind of shrink with them because either they're kind of trying to become their own person, they're taking on a lot of stuff, and then in grade 12 is like they're graduating. They're starting to look for job opportunities or schools and stuff. And it's like your time periods shrink. And so it is important to kind of to be involved during those times. Yeah. And so, yeah, grade 11s, they love to do things. They want to do something like right away. And so that, that's kind of an important thing to remember is that they're not thinking long term. For them, it's just like, like they want, they want things to happen right away and they're not thinking like, oh, like I'll invest into this, this will happen three months later. And like even though, you, like we, well, you, I can't say we, because I'm not that old, but like as you, as you get older, you kinda, that's how you start thinking. You start thinking more long term, but for grade 11s, it's not like that. They kind of, they like to jump on opportunities right away. And so for them, kind of this, 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 face, this fast paced kind of stuff, that, like life they live is, uh, they kind of start ask, asking, like, how do I matter? And kind of they want to matter, like, right away. And for them, it's kind of it's important to kind of, like, tell them that. And so it's, like, it's like, yeah, it's like, you matter. And that's kind of, it's a, really, it's a really easy way to get to their heart, is to just tell them that they matter. It's because they're, they're living so fast-paced, they're doing so much, and it's just like that kind of, that bit of truth can really can really touch them. 
Yeah. Uh, I think to be careful of is don't let them overcommit. Because just like adults, teenagers can burn out just as easily. And that can, that can lead to just like mental conditions where they're kind of, they're too stressed out, there's too much going on in their lives, and you kind of, that's kind of where you come in, you're kind of like that, that balance, that experience was just like, whoa, you can like, you can slow down. <clears throat> yeah, and kind of, this is, this kind of, in their development, in this kind of stage, uh, one thing that's shown really cool results is missions experiences, kind of like what Darren does, where he'll take a group somewhere else, and they, they tend to be very effective for these grade 11s because they're trying to get that freedom. And for them, this is. It's like, oh, you're away from your parents. You're kind of doing something on your own. And you kind of you get a different insight into the world. And it, kind of, it can be a huge boost in their faith at that point because that can be kind of, like we talked about for the grade 12, that can be them making their faith their own. They kind of see God in, kind of, in a different way. And that's what tend to, mission experiences tend to be. Is they tend to be more <laughs> beneficial for the team going out versus who they're actually serving there. And I remember for me personally, like in grade 10, my dad took me along with him on a mission experience to Brazil. And like, like that fundamentally changed the way I looked at my future because for me that opened up the door of ministry where I kind of went over there and this was like my first experience like serving within the church and kind of seeing that like, hey, maybe God is calling me here. And that kind of planted the seed in my mind that kind of led me here. And so it's been, yeah, it's pretty, it's, they're, they're very kind of, can be kind of like this pinnacle point in a youth's life where it's just like, yeah, this is what, this is what faith is, or like, this is why I serve. And so in terms of faith, uh, because grade 11's, they kind of, well, not just grade 11, just because in this, this kind of time period, they're doing so much, and they're kind of experiencing so much. Uh, they love to see how God works. They kind of, they don't, they don't, they never get enough of that. They never get enough of like hearing what God is doing or seeing what God is doing in their lives. It's just like, it's one of those things like you can just like feed into it because they're kind of living this fast paced life. They're kind of like seeing and kind of to see how God is working in their lives right there and then there is really, really good for them and really cool too. And so, and just like grade 10s, it's like make church a priority but don't let it be the only place where they kind of hear the Bible and Jesus because you and your actions are just fundamental to how their faith develops. Because like I, I saw in, a, in an illustration once in a sermon where it's just like this man had ping pong balls to represent how much time the church had with your, with your kids throughout their entire lifespan. And it was like 300 ping pong balls represent what the church had. And then he looked over to the other one and it was like 4,500 ping pong balls stacked in this tube. And that's like how much time a parent has with their kids. And it's like, I saw some, some like I've done some, some research on why young adults leave the church and kind of what helps with them kind of finding a church or staying in the faith after they kind of graduate and move on. And the biggest one was the involvement of parents and leaders in their lives. Of having someone that mentors them, kind of walks beside them. And that just like, I think it was boosted their chances of remaining within the church by 30%. And so just not letting just the church do the work for you is important. It's kind of having that connection outside as well. And kind of the same, the same questions apply. It's like, what has God been teaching you? You can ask them because as much as they love seeing how God works, they love to talk about it as well sometimes. And so it's important to kind of ask them where they are faith-wise, but also kind of tell them where you are faith-wise. Because monkey see, monkey do. And kind of high, high school students. And then, yeah, and then grade 12. This is kind of a crazy part in their lives. And so they're asking the question, what's next? Grade 12 is coming up, graduation. Some of them don't have plans. This can be incredibly stressful, incredibly scary for them. And so you might be thinking like, yes, I made it. They're going to move out next year. Like I'm done. And that could be kind of 
the exact opposite, actually, because as, as they kind of reach kind of that closer, that graduation period where they know they're moving away, they, they'll tend to turn back to you. They'll tend to kind of be like, oh no, I'm about to lose this. And so it's kind of, it's kind of this weird stage in their lives where they're, they haven't fully developed into an adult, but they're getting to that point where they're like, oh man, I'm gonna have to be like self-sufficient. So even after they kind of graduate and move away, they'll tend to want to be more connected. They'll ask you for help for stuff. And so it is a cool, po it is a cool part in their lives because they're kind of starting to kind of make those next steps, kind of start to make plans, start to act like more like adults. But, uh, but as graduation approaches, they kind of realize that their, their days of childhood are numbered and they'll tend to draw closer to you or they'll be so busy that they don't even notice and then it kind of just hits them and it's like, oh no. And kind of, that's kind of happened to me because like grade 12 happened, graduated, and then I worked all summer and then I went off to Bible college, which was away from home. And I, kind of remember, and I didn't go home for my first break, so I wasn't home till Christmas. And this was like, I was away from my family for four months. And like, that hit hard. Like, I, I didn't realize it, because like the first break came and I was like, man, I don't need to go home. Like, I'm free, I'm a college student now. I'm gonna go off and like explore. And I went down to the States, I had some fun, and then I kind of came back and kind of December hit, and I was just like, I just wanna be home with my family. And I kind of remember kind of that feeling of just like, just missing everybody back home, missing my brothers, missing my mom, missing my dad. And it's just like, man, it just like, my graduation came so fast and kind of just flew by where it's just like, I feel like I didn't appreciate my family enough. And also my parents were kind of working during that time and it's just like, everything kind of just happened so fast. But it's like, yeah, it's, a, it's an important stage to kind of make those last connections. Because a lot of this stuff is like, oh, this is the last time we'll do this together. This is the last time we'll do this together. And so, yeah. And just like grade 11, it's like, you kind of have to schedule that alone time with them where like it may not happen. And so, yeah, emotionally, seniors are becoming more, more stable. They kind of, they value being true to themselves and kind of, yeah, one way to kind of specifically connect with them is just to show interest in them and what they like. Kind of even if you don't like what they like, it's kind of just to show interest in that. It's because, yeah, at this point in their lives, relationships really matter. And kind of love is action. Sometimes it's doing what you don't want to do. It's kind of weird to tell this to a bunch of people who have been doing this their entire life. But yeah, for them it's important to be, kind of just show that interest. To show them that you love them. Yeah, and so even though they're kind of, kind of becoming more independent and kind of taking their own steps, you kind of have to sometimes fall along and pick up the pieces of kind of what went wrong, what exactly didn't kind of work out as well for them. They want, they want, you f they want to be free from your influence and kind of your kind of almost umbrella, but they still want you to be there for them. And it's kind of this weird stage in their life where they're like, they want to pull away, but they're like, oh, I don't know, I still want you there. Kind of, yeah. But yeah, as they kind of, as they kind of begin to pull away, they'll lean in more relationally to you guys most, like they may lean. And so, yeah, just to kind of remember that these last, those la last, I think it's like 52 weeks can, yeah, can have more influence in their lives than a lot of things and kind of just because they're kind of starting a path towards what, who they will become as adults. And so just like the other ones, it's like you gotta mobilize their potential. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but yeah, it's so important to kind of, for them it's kind of just like, just, fa just as fast paced again and they, some of them don't know what they're doing. Like I remember in my grade 12 year, I was just like, I'm going into engineering and that was my plan all along. And then I did calculus in my second semester and I was like, nope. Not doing engineering. Can't do this for the rest of my life. I also talk to some engineers, they're like, yeah, we just sit in an office all day and do this, it's awesome. I'm like, nope, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off to Bible college. And it was just like this weird, it was almost felt like a crisis in my life because the way I think is like, oh, I gotta have a plan. And it's just like that kind of crumbled in my hands and it kind of was my own doing too. And so, yeah, it can, it can kind of be a crisis for youth 
like, yeah, it's exciting. It's kind of it's a huge accomplishment, but there's like huge change coming. And yeah, they're most likely not convinced that they're ready. And they probably aren't. And so kind of it's your job to kind of kind of guide them through this, kind of mobilize them and kind of show them exactly to like, hey, like you'll be okay, and then to kind of just prepare them for what's coming. Yeah, and they kind of, in the same way, kind of, this kind of group, they want to feel part of the process, kind of like, with your family and stuff that happens, is kind of, they move on in their lives, they kind of want to know what happens, why, and it's kind of, yeah, especially in grade 12, it's like, you want to involve them in kind of life things, talk them through life, because, kind of, one example is like, I, my parents kind of never showed me how to do taxes. And you kind of, I worked my first job after college and I was just like, oh, I got no idea what to do with this. And it's kind of just like, it's one of those things, it's like, oh man, I wish my dad would have just sat down and kind of showed me how to do this. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, seniors tend to be asking kind of the same questions over and over because they're kind of, it kind of helps them understand their own thoughts and opinions just by asking questions. And one question they kind of want to know is like, what will I do? Like, what's next for them is an important one. And they don't necessarily figure it out. Like some of them go off to college just taking general studies and then they finish the first year of college and it's like, oh, I still don't know what I'm doing. And so it's kind of, you can, as parents and leaders, you need to have patience and kind of grace and support them as they kind of do this walk. And so they kind of, they just need someone to listen sometimes. Kind of, yeah, I remember like pastor, my grade 12 pastor kind of did this for me. He just took me out for lunch sometimes and kind of sit down and kind of listen to me and kind of, he would, he would never push me in a specific direction. Like never like specifically like, hey, you're meant for ministry, but kind of always said things that kind of made me think that way. I remember I was talking to him after my second year of Bible college, and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going into some sort of ministry. I didn't know what it was at that time. And he's like, yeah, I know. I was kind of pushing you that way with every, kind of everything we had. But he was just like, I was just kind of listening to you and to what you were kind of like, what you were saying, what you wanted to do, where your heart was at, and kind of just like helped you along that way. And I was just like, man, that was some subtle like psychology tricks you were pulling on me. But it's like, it worked. And I was just like, it was so cool because like, he basically just listened to what I had to say and kind of guided me through that. Yeah, so you want to kind of capture their heart and kind of speak hope and encouragement to their lives whenever possible. It's because they need that sometimes where it's just like their future may seem hopeless because grade 11 they were kind of just living for the moment and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, now I have to start thinking long term. Yeah, you kind of, you coach, they kind of have they're kind of, they're really motivated by freedom. They kind of, they really, they want that. And so you kind of, you have to kind of coach this motivation when you focus on their options. As a parent and a leader, it'll be hard to kind of find a balance between helping them narrow down their choices and then giving too much advice. So kind of, yeah, like I said, listening helps a lot sometimes. It's kind of like see where they're at. Uh, Faith-wise, you want to kind of fuel their passion to keep pursuing just authentic faith and to, yeah, just make it their own still. Yeah, like this is kind of like almost like your last year where it's just like you have that day-to-day -day influence in their lives and kind of, yeah, it's important to them. It's important not just, like, not just for their lives, it's kind of like we're talking eternity here. It's like this is their, the battle for their souls. And it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, it's a hard thought where it's just like you can't make them believe, but you can kind of, you can show them what it looks like. Yeah, and at this stage, youth tend to be tempted to kind of check out of church or kind of like their student ministries and kind of focus on what's next, kind of graduating. And so kind of, it's helpful to keep them connected encourage them to kind of serve within the church, kind of make them feel purpose. 
because for them that's what it they want to feel purposeful they're kind of reaching that point of maturity where it's like okay like who am i and what am i what am i doing what's my purpose here and for them to kind of have a serving role within the church whether it be kids ministry uh, i don't even know student leadership within youth to kind of be involved within the church but not just as like a attendee but more like hey you're involved within the church can really help them moving forward and so you kind of you have to help them keep an open mind towards their faith and kind of resist pressuring them and kind of engage more relationally where their faith is at kind of keep it a more kind of like part of a daily conversation versus like hey you need to believe this why aren't you doing this yeah, kind of the same thing, kind of opening those, asking those open-ended questions, like, when do you feel closest to God, or uh, what has God been teaching you, and kind of, are you going to join, like, a student, or a college ministries group when you kind of leave from home, and kind of, that's also a huge aspect of kind of some of the research I did was how, how huge the influence was of being connected to a church right off the bat if they move away. And what, that's what youth tend to do here at Lloyd, is they move away. I've kind of noticed that because it's not my age. But uh, they tend to move away and kind of huge, I believe it's, it's massive, like 40% of youth, if they're connected within the first few weeks of moving away to a church, be it through parents, leaders, the youth pastor, they're kind of like, hey, there's a church here. Or like someone from that church comes and like, hey, you can come to our church here. Can, it's like astronomical because uh, youth these days tend to be very kind of socially anxious, meeting new people, going out into kind of into new environments, and for them it already is a new environment. They moved away from home and to kind of experience that another one is kind of it's hard for them. And so kind of having that kind of connection from back home, kind of setting them up or kind of kind of guiding them towards the church can be very very helpful. And so. But yeah, they also, they, in grade 12, you really kind of start to, because you've kind of, the way you've kind of started to develop into adulthood, you really appreciate authenticity and just being around people who are real. And that's why kind of youth leaders have such a major role within youth ministries, and especially within, within our youth ministry here at this church, it's very relationally based. And they kind of get to see kind of through their leaders kind of, faith and they kind of have someone who's specifically there to kind of guide them through their faith journey. But like, yeah, being authentic, who you are and kind of what you believe in with them can be huge in their kind of development. Yeah, this it kind of, it flies by. Like I kind of, I was kind of preparing for this and I was kind of reading up on some of the stuff and th really thinking about it. And I'm like, man, I can kind of Grade 10, 11, 12 is just like a blur of what happened sometimes. But like so much of that played an effect in who I became and where I ended up. And kind of, yeah, even though I didn't have a huge influence from within the church, my parents made it a very kind of an important aspect of our lives. For me and my, I can see it in my brothers too. They're kind of, my, I have a great brother in grade 11 and grade 12. It's so like kind of hitting that point where I'm like, I know exactly what you're going through. You want to get away from home. You want to experience that freedom. Because our, well, yeah, our dad is very strict. We all agree on that. And so we're just like, freedom. And I'm like, yeah, you guys are going to get your four months of freedom. And you're going to be, you're going to be right back home. And you're going to, you're going to love it because this, because family is so important. And so, yeah. Does anybody have any questions?